so today I thought I would walk you through just um, one of the simple processes of uh, how to make a regular bra pattern into a long line bra pattern. So I've done this before with the Black Beauty bra from Emerald Erin and it's it's crazy easy to do um, and I'll, I'll stick a couple of pictures up here just to talk you through those patterns. But what I thought I'd do is I will show you how to do that with the Devonshire bra. So if that's one of your favourite bras, I'll show you how to make it into a long line bra. It's really easy. It does take a little bit more thought in terms of the pattern pieces. But what I'll do is I'll take you back to the table and I'll just show you how I've done that with the pattern pieces just to make that easier. Okay, so um, this is literally just baking paper. Um, you can use pattern tracing paper. It doesn't really make any difference. Um, what I tend to do is I tend to trace it onto tracing paper and if it's a pattern I like, I then buy some really, really cheap plastic um, kind of placemats and I cut out the plastic placemats and I make um, patterns from them just to keep it simple. So here is the frame. So this is the outer cut piece and the inner bridge. And then obviously you've got the repeat version over here. And this is the Devonshire bra, you can see it's 38C, so in the middle of the sizing range. And one of the things that I've done is, oh you can see my little yellow dot, that's because I've made lots of different pattern alterations over the years. Um, this is an original piece, so I have traced out my original side cup onto the tracing paper. So you can see here, just need to make sure Got the direction of greatest stretch so that is around your um, lining fabric so the power mesh you just need to make sure it's stretching in the right direction to give you the right support label it so you know which one it is and you can see what I've done is I've traced around the pattern this is the line here where that pattern finished and then I've dropped the hemline by three and a half centimeters you could do four, I have done it much longer, so I've done it up to five previously. But for me, I find that three and a half centimetres is the most comfortable. Let me just move that out of the way a little bit, please. Okay. And all I've done is just add three and a half centimetres in dots all the way along. Just be mindful that you do have a slight curve, so you would expect it to curve very slightly. So that's the easiest piece to alter, I think. Okay, the next piece is, so this is the centre bridge. Now, what you'll see, I'm going to just move this up slightly. Let's go the side of the way. Okay, is, so this is the main pattern piece here. Let me move that out of the way. So here's the main pattern piece here. And again, I've added the dotted line under here. And I've gone, and using my French curve, so these are super great and incredibly cheap. Again, bought that off eBay, I think. And I've added three and a half centimeters to all the style lines. In fact, you can even see the dots where I did it. And then if I didn't want to use the flat edge of my lace, so if I show you my lace here, so you can see pretty much, I really am loving this sort of eyelet effect on the bottom. So one of the things that I am thinking of doing is extending what is in essence this curve here into a nearly flat line. So if I was going to just make a conventional long line bra, I would take it up slightly in the middle just because that makes it more comfortable. But I want to use this lace to its full effect. So I have flattened, want the camera, flattened the edge along here and the plan is to use this eyelet lace edge like this. The other thing you also need to remember is that this distance here, so up to the centre of the bridge, needs to fit your lace completely. You can see here it just about fits my lace. Okay, the next piece that's really important is the back band. So again, I traced around the back band, marked in the usual curve line here. So this is where it would normally finish. Then I have added three and a half centimeters. So that takes you to this line up here. And what I've done, because I want to 
um, utilize again I want to utilize this the lace edge of the elastic I have also added so there's my pattern piece I've added my three and a half centimeters I have also added the width of where's it gone my elastic and that is because this elastic will get sewn on that way up and then you will be turning the lace turning that so this is the power mesh sorry so eventually you will turn the lace under and then the lace will continue on this way it just makes it so you can utilize that edge of the scallop so much easier um, it'll all make more sense and what I'll do is I'll link the next video in to this video so you can see. Now all you've got to do is cut your pieces out. The same cut pieces as normal. So here's the cut pieces. So this is the outer cup. This is the inner cup. So exactly the same as normal. Cut them out and then I'll turn them all out, lie them on the, the mat and then you'll see how it looks. So this is them cut out, so this is the outer cup and the inner cup, then I've got the side of the cradle, this piece is a bit curly for a minute, the end of the roll of my grocery paper, and I've got my Devonshire bra, and you can see that's a slightly flatter edge, and then background which does look massive but you'll see how that works so I'm just going to cut them out and then I will come back and show you how it looks when they're all cut out okay so let's start sewing so what does, one of the things I wanted to show you that is slightly different um, and this is just because we have got a laced scallop edge effect going here is that when you turn it over the bridge the power net comes slightly higher up than the lace and that's because once we finish making the cradle we're going to sew the um, plush elastic just to this side only but it'll make a little bit more sense so I just wanted to, sh to show you that this is why my pattern pieces are slightly different so if you were just following a conventional sort of pattern and not using the long line or more importantly not using the scalloped edge it would literally just look Sort of it would the lace would come flush with where the power net comes so that's why my lace is overhanging so I'm going to make this process a little bit quicker than the original Devonshire bra sew along and that's just because if you're making this you've probably made the original one already so I'm going to start by sewing wrong sides um sorry right sides to right sides with the lace along the top I'm going to fold it over and then under sew just to make sure that the power net stays in place and then we're going to sew the side of the cradle pieces to here and open out. Okay so we've sewn our um, top of our bridge the next section is to sew right sides to right sides of the lace so this is the side cradle and right side to right side of the power net so basically you've got two layers of power net two layers of lace and then obviously what will happen is once you've sewn it here you just open it out and you'll see so you're going to do the same for both sides so I'll run a seam down let me just move that up a little bit so you can see I'll run a seam down here and then open it out so what I'll do is I will sew both both seams and then I'll come back to you. both the side cradles where is it on there we go sewn on I'm going to cut off the loose ends 
and then you need to layer these seams here so you literally just trim off um, a piece of fabric sort of on this side of the hem and then grade them so each piece needs to be cut at a slight, slightly different length and that just means that the seams are, are much more hidden so then where are we let's turn it that way around so then what happens is you don't get this ugly seam here but the next trick after that is to over sew this edge here so we'll do both sides and then I'll come back just wanted to jump on now and show you the next bit so just while I was off camera I literally just ran some tacking thread round and that just keeps it super in place okay so the next part is very similar to a burrito method so you can see you've got your two open sections and to roll up the other end like that and then open out. Ooh, sorry, there we go. Open out the burrito like such. Then you're gonna find the right side to the right side of the fabric. Now, really, really importantly, and actually, maybe I'll show you that just before we sew. You can see that this power net is slightly longer than. The pattern piece and that is absolutely right and the reason for that and let me just find the elastic to show you is so oh, that's the wrong one. really need to tidy out the elastic drawer okay here we go okay so the reason it's longer is because we're going to sew the elastic onto the net and then we're going to turn the elastic under and it will carry on. So what will happen if I show you that way, we'll run the elastic over here and then we'll turn the elastic under, in which case you will then run, it'll probably make a bit more sense when we do it properly. So, But I just wanted to show you, that. so there we go, it'll, it'll look like that when it's finished. But, I just wanted to show you that that is why my pattern piece is slightly longer here and that's the ledge ed, that's the length of the elastic so as we can see this nice um, eyelash lace so I'm going to say right size to right size and just making sure that that extra bit is hanging off the bottom so we're going to pin it up here and I tend to do this in two goes because it does get fiddly so I pin here then you're going to roll up this burrito like this and then take that and pin it to there and again you will have so the top will meet and the bottom will be slightly longer but I'll get it pinned and I will come back and show you So that's what it looks like when it's all pinned together. So it looks a bit of a strange mess. So if you turn it over, you've got the lace that's from the side cradle. And the wing is in the middle. And then this is the edge of the, um, the power mesh for the side cradle. And you're literally gonna sew all the way down here. And just make sure you've got that little edge poking out the bottom. There we go. So you can see just about before the light goes, that's the seam. So I'm going to grade it, trim down the edges. In fact, I'll just do that now on camera and then we can turn it round and you can see what happens. And then I'm probably gonna have to stop for this evening because 
um, the sun is definitely going down and it's starting to get a bit gloomy. There we go. Braiding the seam literally just means there's less bulk and then this is the exciting bit so you get to turn it round. Looks good from the back and there you go, voila! Nice and neat, ready for the top stitching. So top stitch all the way down here and here you can see this is your overlay. So this is absolutely where it needs to be. So if you do exactly the same for the other side, and then I will meet you back. So I'm just going to oversew here, and then I will meet you back here to show you the burrito method again for this side here. Okay, so there we go. There is the oversewn um, side seam, and you can see it's completely enclosed. Beautiful. The other thing I will just do is finish off these tacking stitches all the way round, and that just keeps this side secure. But what you need to do is you need to start rolling. So keep rolling. There we go, until you get to the other side. So you're going to do exactly the same. It's going to open it out so you've got right sides facing you. And you need the other. So again, this is the right side of the lace, the right side of the power net. right side of the power mesh for the side cradle all the way over and in. There we go. So you're just going to come all the way down with the sewing stitches again and then you're going to open it out and top stitch it just as we did before. Okay so here's our seam that we've just sewn. Open it out, and there we go. So another completely enclosed power bar for the back. So same again. So you are going to want to over sew all the way down this edge, and then just finish off the tacking all the way around the cradle. And then I can show you the exciting bit with the elastic. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit about where we've got up to. So we sewed in the back bands with our sealed concealed seams. Over sewn the edges. I've tacked all the way around the cup and that just means that the lace stays in place. I've trimmed off all the edges. And now we're ready to add our um, lower band elastic so this is plush elastic so on one side I'm not sure you're going to be able to see one side is slightly more plush than the other one and this is um, this is really the trick in how you end up with your scallop edge on the bottom of the bra so as you can see I've got a section of the power net at the bottom that hangs past where my bra line is where my fabric line is should I say and that's because what my plan is, is to sew this elastic on here. So using a three step zigzag, we're going to sew the elastic all the way along here. And then we're going to stop at this point. 
then we're going to not sew anything all the way along here and then we're going to put the elastic back on and sew back along the bottom edge of here. So I'm going to do that using a three step zigzag stitch and I um, will come back to you. So I suppose the important thing is to remember, let me just go back through that, you're going to sew three step zigzag stitch all the way along here and you want the end of the zigzag stitch to finish just underneath where this pico elastic comes here. So you're going to sew all the way along here. You don't need to add any tension to the elastic, you're literally just sewing it to the power net and you're going to stop here, so literally where it joins the lace um, cradle. And then the easiest way is literally just to walk the elastic along the bra and that's just so as you get the right length. And then you are going to start sewing here. So literally back at the lace, the finish of the lace edge. And you're going to sew your three step zigzag stitch all the way until the end. So I'm going to do that now under the sewing machine and then I'll come back. Okay, so you can see I've got the elastic under the sewing machine. Sewing my three step zigzag. Bob's the camera. <coughs> and I'm going to come all the way down and I'm going to stop. I've literally just stopped before the elastic starts and then I'm going to walk that elastic no sewing just with your fingers all the way along here like that start sewing literally just at the point of the elastic again so and you're gonna sew on to the end side round you can see I've got it sewn on all the way here it's loose along the whole length of that elastic completely loose not joined at all <coughs> out of the way but you can see that when you've got that bra completely flat it's exactly the same length and then it goes all the way along so that's still loose till there and then literally joins this bit. So you're going to trim off the edges. And the next exciting bit is when you get to fold under this elastic here. And what you'll do is if I turn it over, it'll be a bit easier to see. So you will fold over your fold over elastic. And then you're going to just continue the seam, the sewing this three step zigzag along here, along this edge, making sure that you've got the power net, but making sure you can see your lace scalloped edge along the bottom, just like that. So pop it under the sewing machine. And again, the, really importantly here, what you want to make sure 
is that your three step zigzag just crosses this edge here and that's to avoid getting this lip of the elastic into your skin it stops it folding under so when you do your three step zigzag just make sure the very edge of it comes slightly just literally a like catches the edge of the power net more than anything and you're just going to do that all the way along which i'll do and i'll come back to you okay <clears throat> so here we've got our second pass and one of the things that I sort of completely forgot to do is I forgot to change out what is the white thread to a sagey green. But actually, when you look at that from a distance, that isn't actually that bad. So I'm, I was going to unpick it and put sage green in the um, bobbin, but actually it doesn't really show. And you can see here, you've got, if I lie that flat, you've got the beautiful scalloped ace ledge with the eye scalloped lace edge with the eyelash lace section really visible and you've got a completely sealed completely well sewn elastic band and if i can get it to zoom in you can see here that this is the edge of the three step zigzag and the stitch literally just catches that outside stitch point outside of that line and there you have it so now what I need to do, this is the long line bodice finished, give or take. My next um, job is to decide which kind of cups I want. So whether I'm going for a non padded cup or padded cup, I haven't quite decided yet. So I will have a think and come back to you later. So the rest of the pictures are just um, how I sewed up the rest of the bra and what I will do is I'll link in the Devonshire bra sew along at the end of the video just for anybody who hasn't made the bra and just needs a bit more of a walkthrough. As you can see it makes a really amazing results with a long line pattern so thanks for joining me. Don't forget if you like what you see come along and subscribe and I'll see you again really soon.